Hello everyone. Today we will be doing the second section of the metals topic and that is the contemporary uses of metals. In this topic we will be lo looking at three different metals, titanium, steel and aluminium. And we'll be looking at alloys of those and the uses. Let's move on. So we'll start with aluminium. Even though aluminium is abundant and possesses useful properties, it was not used widely due to expenses and difficulty in extracting. So before the technology improved, until then aluminium was not retrieved and mainly because it was really difficult to extract from its ore bauxite. However, in 19, 1886, a more viable method of extracting aluminium was developed and as a result, the cost of aluminium went down and the users went up. So you can see how aluminium is a contemporary uh, al metal because it was only extracted in the later centuries. It replaced steel due to its low density and resistance to corrosion. Now these are two advantages of aluminium. So its low density and resistance to corrosion makes it a very useful um, metal in the modern era. Now we'll be talking about the alloys of aluminium. If you mix aluminium with titanium, you can increase the strength and also lower the density. So this is an aluminium titanium alloy and it is mainly used for spacecrafts, aircrafts and boat construction. And this is because of its low density and increased strength. Moving on to titanium, titanium is also an important metal in the modern era. It is extracted from its um, mineral retile, which is that over there, which are found in mineral sands. It is lightweight, but it's strong, so it's a very useful metal. We have aluminium, I mean titanium alloys, and they are usually for structural material, they're structural materials, so they have very good uh, melting points and also they have a low thermal conductivity. But the main uh, advantage is that it's resistant to chemical corrosion, which makes it a great uh, building material for components in ships, such as um, ships over there. Salt water is a major corrosion problem because salt water triggers corrosion and since it's corrosion resistant, it is a good metal to be used. Titanium alloyed with steel produces an alloy that is res resistant to metal fatigue. Metal fatigue is a wearing out of a metal. So as, you wear, as it um, is used, it might be structurally damaged. It is also widely used for surgical implants in our bodies because it does not produce any allergic reactions. And this is very useful. And these are all modern uses of titanium. Now copper, copper is an important metal in the modern era. It has many great pop properties. The first one is that it's an excellent electrical conductor. It's used widely for electrical wiring and also for windings in motors and generators. Now, as you can see, um, electricity is widely used in the modern era for everything and copper is used with it. It does not corrode readily, therefore suited for plumbing in hot water systems. Hot water systems require some material that does not corrode because that way it's longer lasting. And copper is a really good material for that. So wrapping up the lesson, we covered titanium, aluminium and copper. Now we would look at some questions that are reflective of what we just learned. The first question is a multiple choice question. It asks, why was aluminium not used widely before 1886? Option A, it was not abundant. Aluminium is an abundant metal. It's found in the Earth's crust mainly. Um, option B, it was not useful. Aluminium has many great uses due to its great properties. Option D, none of the above 
there is an option above that does reflect um, the answer we need. Aluminium is difficult and it is expensive to extract from its ore. So option D, it was dif difficult and expensive to extract from bauxite before 1886 because it was difficult and also very costly. So option C is the answer. Now moving on to question 7. Question 7 says, Aluminium is the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust and has many valuable properties. Suggest why aluminium was not used extensively until the early 20th century. As we do always, always underline the key verb, suggest. But with this question, they have provided us with a statement before the question. And it is always very important to refer to the statement when you're answering your question. So it says the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust and has many valuable properties. But why wasn't it used until the 20th century? So you would have to provide examples of why aluminium wasn't used even though they had these advantages. Aluminium atoms are held very tightly in the bauxite complex. So here we have the chemical formula for the bauxite complex and also very large amounts of energy, especially electrical energy because this uses the electrolytic process to separate the uh, metal, were needed to extract it and so it was not commercially viable until the early 20th century. So this is a very good descriptive answer of what is asked here. We'll mo move on to question 8 now. It says, identify four metals which are used combi uncombined today and for each metal identify a use. Now with this question, the verb is used twice. That means there are two parts that you need to answer in your question. So the verb here is identify. Identify simply means to uh, name it. So the four metals we'll be looking at first is aluminium. And then they have identified the use, which is drinks, drink cans and window frames. And this is mainly because it's lightweight and also corrosion resistant. Then we have the second metal, which is lead. It is used to shield people from x-rays and nuclear radiation. You would have covered this in year 10, where you learned about nuclear chemistry and you learned about how gamma rays are stopped from lead sheets. Copper using electrical wiring. Now this we just learned about how electric, copper is a great electrical conductor and it is, it is used for electrical wiring. And our fourth is gold and it is used for jewellery. So these are the four metals that we have in our answer and these are the uses. So you understand how you would list, identify the four metals and identify the four uses. Now we're moving to question 9. Question 9 says, list three properties of aluminium and relate the uses to their properties. Again, we have the verb used twice, except this time the verb is different. So there are two verbs. One says to list, the other says to relate. So with the list of three properties, listing of three properties, you would just name three properties of aluminium. However, those properties should be corresponding and make a relationship to their uses. So you have to relate them. Property number one would be thermal conductor. It's a great thermal conductor. So it's used for pots and pans for cooking. The second one is that it's a reflector of heat. Now that's why it's used for roofing because it's, it acts as an insulator almost. And we have malleable, ductile, and electrical conductor. So these, th out of these three, you can use any for your answer, but writing all the three is also a great idea because electrical cables are made because of these properties. Now we come to the end of section two. We covered titanium, aluminium, and uh, steel as the three metals that are used in contemporary day. So, that wraps up the lesson.